We want to switch over our conversation. We'll be talking to a friend of ours who tunes in every morning from Germany. He is now in the country, traveled through the day, arrived at night, slept at uh, the gate, and is now in the, <laughs> <laughs> is now in the studio. George Taita, he's our guest. Good morning, George. Good morning, sir. Karibu sana. Asante sana. In your studio. Yeah. yeah what you've been watching on YouTube. This I thought it. it was just a, a, a fake wall. You thought it was a fake wall? <laughs> yeah. Here yeah, you see it. It's a proper one. Yeah, these are proper. Eh? Now I go spiced. And George has come with security. <laughs> 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 it so happens yeah. that uh, the police spokesperson, Dr. Resila Onyango, has also been in the building. Karibu sana. Uh, thank you so much, Latif. Thank you very much for, you for having passing me. by to come and say hi. Thank you, my pleasure. And you know, of course, we've been uh, sending our invitations. You know that you're here. So yes. But your yeah, invitation in hard copy. Yes. You know that <laughs> yes. No stamp received. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Pastor yeah. Kali. Uh, mm -hmm. Asante. All right. Yeah. Happy okay. International Women's Day. Uh, thank you so much and thanks for that. Mm. And uh, also for me to wish colleagues in the national police service the female officers and around the world a happy international women's day mm. thank you let me just throw a quick one at you yes how many women do we have serving the national police service huh. we are many we are many well given in terms of percentage yes we are around 15 percent 15 percent of yes. police officers are women are women okay. which is excellent because mm. we have even in developed countries that percentage is even less than five percent in many countries so we are doing very well and you with the affirmative action that the government has in the public service that 30 percent of the positions um, we should know the gender two-third rules for it works for us because in promotion uh, recruitment deployment normally we target 30 percent of the slots for women so mm. it's, if you look at our statistics for the last uh, five or six years we are between 15 to 16 percent which is very good that's a very good number yes if you look at now th in terms of rank yes the higher ranks let's say from yeah. commission of police yes going up yeah, commission of police is a uh, level of of county commissioner isn't yes it? from that level going up yeah what's the percentage of women it's interesting we are still running very close to that percentage of 15. Mm -hmm. I wish you had told me earlier to give you the No, I like it because you have the, the figures <laughs> and yes. you, you have them with you. We have very many female officers in high-ranking positions, uh, like well, the commissioner is the rank I hold now. Mm. We are very many uh, in very senior decision-making positions. Even regional command, uh, we have even the regional commander central is a woman. Uh, the other one who has been in Western, Western has been a woman. So we are doing I, I would say we are doing quite well uh, okay does it match also in terms of the number of women who present themselves at police recruitment exercises uh, would you say that you see about 20 percent or thereabouts of all the people who actually turn up yes at the recruitment grounds yeah being women or that depends more? now on the center where we are mm. and the part of the country if you're in nairobi here you'll get quite a number of them and uh, in uh, marginalized parts of the country you may find quite a few uh, but be considering that there are so many youths that are in need of jobs mm. we are getting very high turnout uh, during recruitment mm. yes very good uh, karibu sana our friend george yes uh follows the station the the situation room from germany yes and uh, he's here today because he wants to give us the experience that he has seen in germany when especially when it comes to a job that you the national police service is very uh, much involved in yes in enforcing regulations when it comes to long distance drivers mm. whether they're bus drivers or truck drivers how much rest they get yes what kind of rest places they get uh, how many hours they drive whether they have somebody who is you know an assistant driver who will take over at certain route uh, and such right so that's why george is is, is here to tell us yeah. all those things now give him your experience from in terms of you know the overall from what we see in in our behavior on our roads hmm. the the issue of traffic police officers and what they report in terms of the long distance drivers whether they're bus matatu or truck drivers uh, do they have do we have proper resting hours 
are police able to enforce these? What kind of challenges do they encounter? Um, I would uh, first of all welcome George to Kenya. Thank uh, you. Welcome home. And uh, to say that as far as driving or traffic rules are concerned, our work is to enforce the law, uh, which are the traffic regulations. And to accidents account for so many deaths and uh, traffic accidents around the world. And uh, it's important that we keep talking to members of public motorists to be exercise more caution on the roads. If it's the long distance drivers, they need to get enough rest, uh, probably with alternate drivers. I don't know the arrangements, but it's important so that issues of overspeeding, overloading and recklessness, overtaking uh, in the wrong places we avoid to reduce the road carnage because it's a serious uh, concern. Yeah. It's a so big one. In a nutshell, that's what I would say. Considering that today's George's Day, <laughs> I, I, I want him to, to handle that. Then I would also be very keen to listen to that conversation. Mm. Yes. Let's welcome both of you into Thank the studio you. with the day's proverb, City Has It. Yes. Our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of Rwanda. Today's proverb is a simple, straightforward one. The guest is always the prisoner of the host. Uh, are we supposed to respond to that? Yes. yes. Uh, you can see now I'm a prisoner of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I was the guest of vibes. I've been in prison by spice, but in a good way. <laughs> I would interpret it that directly. <laughs> the guest is always the prisoner of the host. <laughs> I was waiting for the handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> because now I've become a host, <laughs> so the next thing is the handicap. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, what I think, uh, um, you know, we've come here yes. as guests. Yes. We have to follow the regulation. Yeah. You tell us here, you sit here, mm. you do that, mm. you don't touch this, and that is why we are, <laughs> we are, we are, we are, you are. <laughs> Ukienda ugenini fuata maagizo na masharti na masharti ya mwenyeji. Yes. That's it. Thank you very much for joining us. We we'll, uh, let you go. Thanks Latif. And or you can sit by and actually just listen to what George is, is going to tell us in terms of the experience that he brings. I wish I could and but because of the exigency of duty yeah. I request that I go back. And uh, then we'll have another day. Asante. I uh, thank you so much. Your sure your day coming. Asante. Asante. Dr. Resila Onyango the first police spokesman who is a female in the Republic of Kenya has been the one who's been sitting here and talking to us this morning. Very good. <laughs> George. Yes, sir. Karibu sana. Asante. Uh -huh. Niko hapa. First of all, how was your journey from Germany? It was very wonderful. Mm. Uh, all the way we left Germany when it was very cold. <laughs> uh, with about, uh, it, was, it was starting to show some snow and slippery road. Mm. And then you get into the flight. Mm. Somewhere along Sahara, you feel the heat. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that you've crossed. I couldn't even sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. It was too hot. Too hot. Hey. <laughs> George, how long have you been in Germany? Been in Germany for 15 years. Yes. Yes. Does one ever get used to that cold in, the, in winter? Sometimes. Sometimes. It depends. You know, the winter is, is in different kinds of... Uh, it's not always very, very cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you know, like now, it's cold, but there's no snow. Mm -hmm. in some parts mm. like now there are some some areas whereby there's a lot of snow and there are some place, places whereby there's no snow actually we should be having snow now mm. in my in in my village where i stay but uh, for because of the climate change how can snow you live in a village yeah it's a village you, you know? live here you go there to germany you live in a village <laughs> you know when i say when i say a village <laughs> yeah it's a village but it's an know, estate you know, yeah you know Somehow. how we are when you say village you know as we are thinking <laughs> yeah. you're thinking cows mm. mm -hmm. dust. yeah of course they're cows. dust mm. yes you're thinking a few hearts maybe tire corboy yes <laughs> very few vehicles now, in the place I stay, is about uh, 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, we have three supermarkets. We have three banks. 
and uh, fire station and the mayor's office. That's it. Yeah. What do people do around there? Do they only uh, use this as a dormitory and then they work in a bigger, in a larger city? Or yeah, they they work? they work in large cities. Okay. So, you know, like now, for example, um, people drive at a radius of about 30 kilometers to go to work. And um, mainly, it's like now, people who are living in Limuru and working in Nairobi. In Nairobi? Yeah. It's not far. Yeah, yeah, but the difference, I think, mm. if you look at Germany, mm. it's the road network. Mm. Yeah. It makes that traveling easier. Mm. And then there's also public transportation. The, 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 the movement is not as... You know these traffic jams we keep speaking yes. of here? Yes. I'd like to ask George, do people experience traffic jams the way we do in Kenya? Uh, it took me almost 30 minutes from <laughs> Ole, Sere, is it, yeah, Ole, Sereni. Ole Sereni. Yes. 30 minutes to come here. How many meters is that? From Ole Sereni? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. I think because my, okay. you my have to drive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, my question has been answered, has it not? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the thing is that um, mm. in, um, in Germany, mm. <clears throat> traffic is you know we don't work like here mm. because people work in sequence mm. so the first uh, i would say that uh, it's a 24 hour kind of uh, economy economy yes so the first group that goes to work is at around 4 30 in the morning in the morning okay so nurses doctors and medical H healthcare workers healthcare workers yes and now the drivers yes for the buses yes they wake up at that time. Mm -hmm. So, 4.39 is the first bus leaving the estate. Like now, for example, if you're in Kawangware, mm. coming to Kenyatta, mm. the first bus that leaves Kawangware... The number 46. 46. Mm -hmm. It's at 4.39. And it must be 4.39. Not 4.40. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Why... Is that is it because there's another one for 440 or 440? Yes, there's another one, but mm -hmm. now that particular person is supposed to be at work, work. at a certain time. It's a certain time, and also there are people also boarding that bus in order to catch up the train. All right. So it's all connected mm. in a way that um, you know if you you as a driver you mess up and the mistake is yours you'll pay for that because you've actually affected all your passengers yes and their next connection and yes. the rest of their day yes my goodness so i want to understand how many shifts are there okay there's the there's a four or four thirty okay. four thirty okay then comes the now uh, what i call them civil servants yes uh, those are the guys who are going to work at seven thirty plus there's children to school okay yeah, they start around 6.30 mm -hmm. because it depends with the yes. connection. Okay. So then the one who gets into work at 8 and then they end up at around 5 o'clock. So the other ones are getting in at 9 o'clock. They end up at around uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. Okay. Then there are those who come in at 7? At 7, yeah. And they, they end up at? They, they go like that, eight hours. Uh, oh, it's an eight hour. Okay. Yeah. Once you say eight hours, I, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, but now for the, for the bus drivers, yes. for example, yes. if you work, let's say this week, I have early shift. Yes. That means that I start from 4.39. Mm. Tomorrow, I'll not start at 4.39. Mm. I'll start at around uh, five. 20. In the morning or in the evening? In the morning. In the morning. Uh -huh. So, they, you know, you have to have enough rest. And you don't go... Now, if you start from 4.39, at 12.30 is finito. Y your your work for the day is over. Yeah. Your day is done. Is done. At 4.30. 4 4 and uh, no, 4.39 a.m. Yeah. to 12.30 p.m. P.m., yeah. Just the morning. Just the morning. Uh -huh. But you have also a break. There's a break either for 20 minutes or 30 minutes in between in between and then the next time you come to work is tomorrow morning yes yeah, you, you there's a there's a there's a break you have to have a break of how many and hours what's the regulation about maybe sometimes an hour 
but divided in sequences. Mm. Like now, for example, I'll give you an example. If you are driving from Kawangware, mm -hmm. you come all the way to Kariobangi, like the early 46. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you drive from Kawangware, you go to, to Kariobangi, mm -hmm. and then you come back at the station, mm -hmm. uh, someone else should take that bus. When you take the bus back to Kawangware, Someone, yeah, else that, so, someone else is, will take a bus now to Kawangware. Mm. You remain at the... You take a break. A break. At the bus station in town. Yeah, in town. Ah. Okay. And then, uh, now you'll not take the same bus. How long is that journey that you've taken from Kawangware it's, to... It's an hour or so. Let's say 45 minutes. So from Kawangware going all the way to the end and back to bus station yeah. is about an hour. Yeah. After that one hour, you must take a break. You must take a break. Why? Be because like uh, they don't want you to go... You know, concentration. And also, you know, there is also a sequence of the buses. Mm. Because every bus is connected with a train. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too organized, man. Yeah? It's too organized. You know, <laughs> it is music. Mm. You know, this is where now one goes down memory lane. Mm. Because some of us remember a time when mm. Kenya bus... Yeah was also scheduled with the time. Yes. Same. You knew. At this point, and even there was a board that showed you, yeah. bus number this is expected here at this time. So you simply waited and it arrived. And it didn't matter whether there was one passenger or two, the bus was there. Now, let me give you a, a, a story. Mm. Like now, the last bus in the evening, mm -hmm. if, it has, if it has to go from Kawangware mm -hmm. to Karyobangi South, and that is the end, mm. It must go to the, till the end, even if it's one person or nobody inside yeah. the bus. Mm. It goes until the end. Until the end. Same thing we used to experience with Kenya bus. Actually, it, with Kenya it, bus, there was something even better. Mm. There was a last bus that took people everywhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, it's like it went, it went to the throughout the whole town, like now. Yes, Berlin. Mm. There's a bus 24 hours or a train mm. 24 hours. Meaning, at any time, <coughs> there are people who have got no homes. They live inside there. The, bu the train? Yeah. The bus or, or the, the train. train? The train. Wow. In terms of terms of service, so that number one, it's you're, you're explaining, it's very, very clear mm. to the authorities that this driver must rest in order to maintain their concentration level. Yes. Okay. So that means that we have to employ enough drivers to cover the shifts. Yeah. Um, there are those who say, you know, in our transport sector, it attracts it attracts people who are just feeling frustrated. It attracts people who are feeling, you know, they don't want to, they have nothing else to do, so they just ended up here and they want to do their own business. What kind of qualification does one need to be a driver? in those buses that you're talking about in Germany. So, if you want to become a bus driver, first of all, before even you do any, let, let's say driver mm. from a small car, number one, you must have first aid training. Okay. Eight hours, mm -hmm. precise, from uh, like, for example, St. John's, and you have to come with that certificate and give it out to the authorities. Mm -hmm. and the certified mm -hmm. then you sit for um theory class written exam yeah it's a theory mm -hmm. whereby you you sit for a certain duration of time mm -hmm. like over around 20 hours or uh, uh, let's say per day mm -hmm. about uh, uh, two and a half hours uh -huh. yeah and you know most of the german kids they start driving school at 16. Mm -hmm. Meaning that by the end of 18, he will be able to make his driving license. And he will not drive alone. Uh, he can drive at 16, he can get the license, but he cannot drive alone the car without their parent or a guardian. So there must be an experienced person yeah. with them in the car. Yeah, he cannot even go down to the supermarket alone. He has to have someone in the car mm -hmm. yeah but from 18 
18? They're the fine. They can now, now they are adult. Yeah. So this is the person that you're saying, once you get that certification, mm -hmm. just a driver's license, a basic driver's license, yeah. now to qualify to be a bus driver, you need more. Yeah, Number you need one, also to go to the school again. You, now, mm. you go for health checkup. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go for health checkup, and then they do what we call reaction test, whereby, you know, they test you in all sorts of things, even e ears, hearing. Because, like, uh, they can give you a sound, uh, you know, with the earphones like that, yeah. and give you a very small sound, and then you have to make sure that you hear it. And there's someone who is looking at the computer. So if you hear a, vo a sound, you put up the hand. So they know what sequence of... Ah. Yeah. The heart mm. also has to be measured and everything. And this is for all bus drivers? This is just all to drive a no, bus? Drivers for trucks and buses. Must. Eh. And it is every five years you have to go, uh, you have to continue. So every five years you do the health check? Yeah, health check. And also there is a continuous uh, training. Why is it so important? To keep safety. You know, look for example, mm. how many accidents happen in Kenya? On the roads? Yeah. Many. I uh, did to pull out the statistics that are shared 13, by Kipchumba Mukomen. 13,000 accidents a year. A year. Mm -hmm. In Germany, 3,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, <laughs> most of the accidents, um, <clears throat> sometimes it is, uh, maybe it is uh, from the, the driver's uh, failure, mm. because mostly, it's not the vehicle uh, maintenance. Because, for example, if I am a driver in the bus and I sit in the bus and I realize that uh, the indicator is not working, mm. I'm not supposed to drive that beer. That's it. There. That's it. Yeah. You park it. Yes. And you inform the... The company. The, yeah, you inform the station. Because in the station, there's someone sitting at the control room watching around the computers how the buses are driving and even they will tell you you are late you are supposed to do that you know there's always a con uh, someone who is controlling mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> all right eric repeat it mm -hmm. they're too organized yeah they're too organized it's too much organization <laughs> too much organization and it's just driving a bus yes yes Bus to we're gonna have to sixty. Right. But but you remember but remember what happens and what we're seeing here before we go on this break, yeah, mm. is how it is that organization is not only a system but is it's internalized. Yes. People have understood. And so you find things work. Because yeah. mentally it's been accepted and it's been internalized and it's what people do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So this issue of the system doesn't work, it doesn't arise, it works. Yeah, and it's because the people understand how to make it work, and they do their bit. Because systems don't work without people. Of course, yes, and they don't just work without a plan. No, yeah. they don't. It's been designed this way so that it works that way. Yes, it doesn't. Uh, it's not designed one way and then it works the other way. <laughs> it can't be. This is because there was some thought process that went into it. Let's take a break. George Taita Mite is our guest this morning. He is a urban transport specialist from Germany. He lives and works in Germany. He's here in the country. He's coming to share the experiences of what he's seen in Germany, particularly when it comes to driving public service vehicles and commercial vehicles, trucks. What is it that Germany has done and what can we borrow and implement here? This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Aita, who is from Germany, he just landed this morning, he's lived there for 15 years, currently working in the transport industry in Germany, you drive these buses and you're telling us it takes you, it's not just that you finish high school as you're waiting for something else to do, Gwenda course, bus, matatuya so and so. It actually is more than that. Yeah. How long does it take for one to become quali a qualified bus driver and to, yeah. for one to be allowed to start driving a public transport vehicle? First, um, you do the theory part. Mm. Um, the theories are in different. There's a, they call it a social force shift 
that is the laws and the regulations of uh, the like, like their transport uh, road 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 no no that's that no regulations in transport sector it's like the traffic act no traffic and the regulations act is totally different because i have these two books okay so this one is only to qualify to be a, a bus driver uh -huh. you have to have to know the laws to know the regulations and also um the we call it uh, the Tabiaza Barabarani. Mm. Yeah, that's all here. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, road signs. How long does that take? That one takes about uh, almost a month or two. How many exams? One exam. One exam. Okay. And uh, they are um, in this grund qualification. It's called uh, grund, uh, basic, mm. basic grund, mm. grund basic. basic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bre uh, grund basic. So grund. Uh, basic uh, qualification that means that you have to uh, learn about 1,300 questions and 30 out of those questions will be <laughs> brought in the exam. 1,300 questions? Yes. And they will bring 30? Yes. Okay. And they will choose from different uh, topics within there. Uh, the so, so in a sense it's not really unfair. Mm. Yeah. No, because I think all those questions relate to what you're going to do. Yeah. But they just want to determine how thorough are you in your knowledge. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And once you pass that, then you can now do the real okay. work. Okay. What's a pass mark, first of all? Uh, you have to have um, 60 percent. Okay, mm. this fifty percent they don't think yeah. it's fair. Half mm, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. And you know, even if you pass with only point five, mm. you've passed. As long as it's above sixty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fine. Mm -hmm. So you've now passed that exam. Now you are qualified to go and do the real work. So that one is to determine whether you can drive. Yes. But are you? Are you? No, no. You not. You can drive. If you can be allowed to work, it's like a license, you know, like... A, you oh, so that first exam is just to give you a license. Yeah, to to study now as a driver. Why? Because the Indian habits not be as a barabarani. All right. So you now have license. Uh, You've been licensed. No, you to qualify to now... To what are, what are, for, give us an example of the li uh, habits that are a barbarian, for yeah. example. For example, some contents in that. Yeah. Um, you know uh, the way that uh, you you have a bus, mm. you're driving along the way, mm. um, you you overtake in a very careless manner, mm. or else you know you you stop, you have a breakdown with your bus. What should you do to make sure that? you do not endanger ah. the other part, uh, road users. Okay. So these are all the things that you're told. So yeah. you don't overtake this dangerously here and this, yeah. this is considered dangerous. I love to tell uh, the laws mm. and regulations of transport. So if the bus is full, you're not allowed to go uh, at a certain speed. Because Uko, you know, people even hold it yes. mm. Yeah. So you have to go at a certain speed because like there are these, uh, you call it, we call it sea harmonica. Mm -hmm. You know, the bus, the joint buses. Yeah. Those very long ones. Yeah, the long ones. Mm. So there's a certain speed that you drive at. I just want to ask this question, okay? Yeah. If I wanted licensure just to drive my own car, mm -hmm. would I then study that green book only? No, you'll study this only. The one for driving. Just yeah. for driving. Yeah. That's what I would study. Yeah. Now, when you want to say, CT, you have a lot of uh, hours and you would like to work as a bus driver as a, you part know. Part time. Part time. Mm. Sabu, so, you know, you work up to around 11, you finish your work. Then I'm free. Mm. Yeah. So you are free. You can s say, I will be working as a school bus driver. Uh, yes. So I pick the kids from school. And I bring them home. Yo, lazima ofanye iya green. Wow.
Na uendele na pia and then there's also some questions from this. All right. Now mm. you've been given permission to study for, from that book. Yeah. What does that other book study? Tabia za barabara hiyo tumepitia sasa yeah. na na that one. Sasa technical. Yeah. What is technical about it apart from just driving? The uh, the curves the distance the braking distances and uh, something like uh, uh, what type of a bus are you driving is it a low flow bus or is it a high bus okay what's a low flow bus low flow bus is a bus that uh, for example i'll give you a, an example uh, there are buses like uh, here this coast bus mm -hmm. that is a uh, high high flow okay mm -hmm. high flow mm -hmm. Because like in in the curve, you have to go at a certain speed. speed yes. Now there is a low flow, like which the is uh, like the the ones at the airport, airport. is a low flow. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because yeah. like even you can you can you can come to the bus stop and uh, uh, m uh, handicapped people with a wheelchair can actually board. Yeah. Now the high floor, but, uh, the other and those buses yeah. also have facilities yeah. for people who may have wheelchairs to yeah. be able to board. Yes, are these sp specific buses that have them, or do all public transport? All have public transport have specific uh, have facilities. Those facilities. All. All. Ata ile ya nini long distance. Mm. There are some of them which have uh, the lift. Okay. This one I have to ask. Yeah. Akuna matatu? Matatu ndiyo hii. Hiyo basi. Sio matatu ya 14 uh, 14 seater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you said there are different buses. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The smallest bus what's its capacity? The smallest bus capacity ni 25. That's small. Yes. Okay. And that is uh, now, for, for example, I'll give you an example where I uh, in the city I come from, or mm -hmm. the village I work, uh, the city I work in mm -hmm. uh, is where they, they manufacture uh, COVID vaccines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have two different factories. Like uh, one side is in Nyaya Stadium and here. Now, between uh, you work in this at standard here. And then you have the other side uh, laboratory. Mm -hmm. So, ukiweka nini yako kwa when you are checking, so you have to commute to the other side. Yeah. So you just drive with this twenty-five seater. You it goes in sequence. Okay. Between that, that's the only thing. That's the only bus that is allowed to vie there. To do the crossing. Yes. Now let's talk about the truck drivers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it the same same kind of regulation that you have for truck drivers? Yeah. Now, the only thing with the truck drivers mm. is that about uh, the loading of the of the of the goods, mm -hmm. they must make sure that you tie them properly, secure them properly. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether you saw there was an accident somewhere in Eldoret where the the whatever the fell cargo on a vehicle. just fall. Yes. Now, you know that is the mistake of the driver. It's not the company. It's the driver. It's a driver. Mm. Because if you secure that, you will be okay. Mm. Because when the police come at the scene, because like they always stop you and they have to check, did you secure the goods? What type of uh, belts or uh, ropes did you use? Yes. And, they, and every load has the marked... A belt with the tons. So if you use a uh, ten tons to secure a 40, 40 Tan tons, load. then you get That's a ticket. It's it's not even on the company. <laughs> it's you, the driver. <laughs> How do they enforce these kind of things? Is it police officers who enforce it, or yeah. is it the do, do they? There is a stop tracking companies have their own in inspectors. Stop checks from the police. By the police. Yeah, you know, for example. Um, the, there is a unit in the police that deals with the with the road carnage or something like that. Mm. So they can stop any truck along the way, and they check you because, like every driver, a bus driver or a truck driver, you have a card. You insert it inside there. 
the, the there's a computer compartment on the dashboard on the dashboard mm. when you start driving that uh, that will tell the police driver because the policeman mm. how many hours you drove how many minutes you stopped <laughs> 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 you'll not you'll not be able to escape so basically and your card is logging you as you yes. as you're going yes when when you on the move it shows yes when you stop it shows yeah <laughs> is, is there an app that also indicates the number of people who bought the bus uh, not no. exactly so how do you know that there are enough passengers you know the, the way that you drive because like for example the city buses you know they can load as much as they can oh yeah the ones which traverse just yeah, within the city within the city but now the long distance buses is only the seats that's it yeah and you know the number of seats yes okay so and you know i mean everything is online bus image tosha i could not hear oh along the way i saw a buddy of mine uh Senani. yeah squeeze <laughs> <laughs> Now, my next question is this. The same exam that somebody who wishes to drive a 25-seater is the same exam that someone will sit if they want to drive that bus that looks like a train because it has has been connected. Yeah. Same. Same exam. Because it is mm, passenger. Okay. Now, when it comes to the technical aspects, just walk us through. What constitutes this technical aspect? Okay, you can drive curbs, the things you need to know. Do you really need to know how that vehicle moves on what part it has and how it actually moves from point A to B? Yeah. Are you required? Yes. You Re- required? You you'll have to go with an examiner to test you. For example, along Thika Road. Mm. You have to go even if it is full with uh, you know that that traffic. Mm. You have to go along it. Otherwise, it's a fake about what. <laughs> you have to know when you're coming to the roundabout, you don't go the inner side, you go to the outer side. Everywhere. You know the marked... Uh, the yes, marked yep, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yep. That is, it's written bus, and that is the bus area. There is no matatu or a small vehicle that will come to that particular place. So that lane is bus. only for buses. Yeah. Hey. And as soon as, and also and also there is also marked places for the for the bicycles mm. because you have to take care of that uh, bicycle. You are not supposed to come near the bike with. Uh, you have to leave one point five meters. And the road provides for that space. Yes, but motorbikes, where mo- do they fit in? Motorbikes like a car. Yeah. They, okay. So there's bus separate. Bicycle separate, buses separate. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Ego, ego, katika barabara, and, and they are marked. So if it is in the city center, come on, for example, from Moy Avenue, mm-hmm. you're coming to, you start, we, we start from the, what is it called, the university way? Yes. Mm. So from there, at the roundabout, there's a lane marked all the way up to Hilton. Bike on the side. But then the bus. bus. So you know. Yes. Ati kuna jam, wacha ningia ya basi. You cannot. Na, and there are no traffic policemen that is standing on the on the roundabout to guide the nini vehicle. It's lights, and that's all. You cause an accident, you stop there, you wait for the police. From your experience, George, yeah. because even as you have been living in Germany, you've also been coming to Kenya. Of course, you've been observing. Why has it been difficult to enforce some of these things? You're talking about things that are also uh, have been tried here in one way or the other in this country, especially the issue of long distance driving. Bus drivers or truck drivers are supposed to rest after a certain time. They have speed limiters that are installed on the on the buses and trucks. You have police officers who are along the highway. Why does it not work? Uh, greed. Who's greed? All of them. It's not one-sided. Number one, mm. the owner. These goods must go to Malaba. Yeah. I don't care how you go there. 
That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, uh, as a driver, if I work hard, I get more money. In Germany, it's the other way around. The less I work, the better. <laughs> Because, yeah, health. Uh-huh. No overtime. Yeah, over overtime in driving uh. you the, the company will be charged uh-huh. so that means that for example i'll take an, an example of a truck leaving mombasa they have to go to malaba yes so they have to have about three shifts or four shifts and mostly what happens is that it's only the head wala anatoka na trailer hapa anakuja anafika Nairobi mm-hmm. you you cut the trailer and then that head goes back na trailer ingine na ule mtu alikuja kutoka pande ile mm. that means that this other person lives in Malaba and the other one lives in Mombasa so this Mombasa person does not have to go all the way to Malaba yeah. all the way into DRC all the way into Goma yeah In uh, Kenya, it's, uh, the guy who lives in Mombasa has to find himself in Goma at some point. Yes. So and even when he's resting, he's just sleeping at that car's small bunk. And if he's resting, it means he has no option. Now, those are the guys from uh, Eastern Europe. Hmm. Because most of the drivers in, in Germany hmm. are from Eastern Europe. Yeah. The truck drivers. They drive, but they are also controlled by the transport department mm. whereby they have a situa- uh, a certain time that they're supposed to rest and then friday at six o'clock there are no trucks which are allowed on the road until monday six o'clock unless it is essential services all roads yes uh. Unless it is essential services mm. and they have a special license for driving during that time. What's the reason for that? So that uh, the, uh, you know weekends. What when I can be a safari kama sasa kwenda naivasha. So so to allow for ease. other motorists to yeah. be on the road. Yeah. Remove the heavy commercial vehicles from the road. Yeah. So you plan with Monday to Friday if you want to transport your goods. Yes. And it works. It works efficiently kabisa and there are no complaints no and the truck owners are not saying they are losing business because i mean those are 48 hours of you should, lost you business you should plan and there's nobody who is saying you see now we as manufacturers we've been we are, you're telling us 48 hours of lost business as well you can't fridge the thing is these things have been talked about in this country and like you've said it's greed it's everybody who will come and oppose the status quo everybody seems to be enjoying yeah this kind of status quo that we have yeah even when you talk about removing the trucks from the road they'll tell you those are job opportunities you know yeah. this has been attempted let's go on to sgr so where are you taking you, you all know, these people you know it's been attempted here mm. it's been attempted yeah at a certain hour no trucks no truck. for a long time yes. meaning it gets around six o'clock no movement Stop. you remember there was a time that there was a big uh, there was a lot of accidents mm. whereby the late president moi mm. say that uh, malori akuna ku travel usiku yes. yes he did yeah and now it crept back because i mean we are talking about a 24 hour economy about efficiency about uh, you know ugandans are complaining that their goods are taking too long on kenyan roads this this and the other stories george valuable lessons that you've shared with us thank you very much for your experience and thank you for joining us today asante sana